William Pietri, uh, Urban Academy graduate, 1993. I grew up in the Bronx. I uh, had that kind of childhood I should write a book about. I was selling crack by the time I was 13, and I got into high school. And don't ask me why, but when I got to my first high school, I was kind of disenchanted by the fact that nobody was teaching. And I remember that somebody told me about this place in junior high and was like, well, you know, you can't go unless you're in high school. And so I tracked the woman down and through three different schools and four different offices, I got a number here at Urban Academy and literally had it not been for this school, I'd be dead. New York, the city that never sleeps. Growing up here is tough. Going to school here is even tougher. In this vast metropolis, there's one small school making a name for itself. The Urban Academy is one of six small schools in the Julia Richmond complex. Fifteen years ago, this was the site of a failing massive comprehensive high school, but is now home to six autonomous small schools that share facilities but operate independently. How does being a smaller school within a school work? Urban Academy is a high school, it's a secondary school, and most of our kids are from 14 to 19. Um, we're to what's called a transfer school, so most of our kids come to us from other high schools, not all, but almost all, and they were either not very happy at those schools, or they weren't successful at those schools, or they didn't like the school, or the school didn't like them. With just 150 students, the small scale of the academy allows each teacher to know all the students well. The impersonal nature of bigger schools caused problems for most of the students who transferred to the Urban Academy. I only went there for three days because it was so big that I just felt, and the teachers could not pronounce my name like day after day after day, and it just was kind of like after, it, it just didn't fit me very well. So I just got to a point where I skipped school. I skipped a year of high school, I just didn't go. And I went to the bookstore and I figured I'd just be the smartest guy without a degree. I felt almost stupid and inadequate asking for help because, like, that's just how they made me feel. I got one phone call from um, the school, but after that, I guess they just thought I transferred, so there was no more contact after that. We try to find all kinds of ways of making going to school interesting and engaging, and hopefully they'll, our mission really, as we see it, the staff sees it, is to and create options for them, and meaningful options. So if they decide at the end, of, when they graduate to go to college, they can not only get into college, they can go to college and be successful. Making the school appealing has many dimensions. The corridors are full of armchairs and sofas for the students to relax in. Classrooms embrace youth culture. It's been painted with a special um, blackboard type of paint. And we've had actually had some professional artists in here working on this, but the kids come in and they do designs, they do tags, they do all kinds of things, but it then gets erased and kids, other kids come in and do something else. And even the lessons start, not with a bell, but with music chosen by the students. Because the school is small, all rooms have to be multi-purpose. One of the rooms that we, we specifically built, this is our dark room, and we do a lot of black and white photography. This is one of our science rooms uh, that we use particularly for horticulture. And uh, you could, there's a greenhouse that you can see that we built, different experiments with soil, with fertilizers, with different kinds of plants. Uh, students would be doing uh, their proficiencies, which would be their performance assessments. They would design the experiment themselves. However, the advantage of being in the same building as other small schools means that there are many shared facilities. So this is the library for the whole school. And this gym is used for boys and girls volleyball, boys and girls basketball, uh, track, indoor soccer, and during the day just as a gym for the little kids just to play and um, do games. This is our auditorium. Uh, these are students from all over the city because the acoustics in this hall are very good. What small does is it makes things possible. That being in a really large um, building with a lot of teachers <clears throat> makes more difficult. I think when you have a small school, and by small I mean the number of people who can sit around a table, it seems to me things are possible. You can change the timetable. 
You can um, play with your courses. You can talk to each other about kids. You can plan together in a way that if you're in a huge school and you don't really know each other or you have a lot of layers of different committees or departments, it's much more difficult. And large schools tend to get into crowd control. The key word at Urban Academy is respect, and the students are taught its significance. Respect for each other. Respect from the teachers. Respect for the school. I like the people I was with. I like the fact that they treated you with some semblance of respect. First name basis, I think, was one of the best things I'd ever realized about this school. The fact that you didn't have to put your instructor on a pedestal. It wasn't, uh, I demand respect because I'm a teacher. It's, I command respect because of my actions, because of the way I treat people. I think that on balance, small schools are probably better for kids than big schools in the sense that you have, it's easier to have a, a relationship with an adult. It's easier to get to somebody who can help you. Um, but the critical thing about a school that I think people kind of don't spend enough time on is, is the curriculum and the instruction. I mean, you can change the governance of a school. You can take a big building and chop it all up. And in the end of the day, you won't get a lot better at the educational mission unless you really say, well, how is the size going to help us make this a more intellectually challenging environment? To make sure lessons are engaging, students are encouraged to use dialogue and debate in every class. My name is Becky Walzer. I've taught at Urban Academy for 17 years. I always start the class with a puzzle. And it's a, it's a geometry class, but I start the class with a puzzle that is sometimes includes a geometry concept that's something we're working on and sometimes it's something that's not at all geometry and I just want them to be thinking about other kinds of math ideas and um, they had to decide if zero was an even number or not in order to continue with the puzzle. An odd number divided by an odd number, will it works. An odd number divided by an even number, you always get some crazy non-whole number. Who disagree with this? Yeah. Right, you can't change it. It can go either way. <clears throat> it's neutral. It can change. We know that zero is neutral and it cannot go either even or odd. There's no leaning, there's no such thing as that because it's neutral, therefore it can't go either way, but we know that it's an integer because you can see it's on the integer line, so I don't see what the controversy is about. Exactly. Oh. Therefore, you make zero even. So, right. You're looking at a placeholder like there's no hundreds and there's no tens. <laughs> the size of the student body means that we know everybody in the school. So I know students in my classes. I've known them before they have come into my class. And I know them over a number of years. For me, that's obviously much nicer than just having somebody sit in my class who I don't otherwise know. And for the students, it means they're just, they're themselves, they're real people here, and they get to be known sort of in all their complexity. The fact that they forced us to think and not just absorb and regurgitate. They forced us using our minds, abstract thought. That's gotta be the biggest difference, and I crave that. I love having that kind of challenge for the mind because I realized after I was here that that's what I was missing. It wasn't that I was a behavior problem per se. It wasn't that I, was in, I, was, I hated school. I was bored. No one was teaching, no one was doing anything. In this class, they're using role play to promote discussion and are exploring whether minority ethnic students should have reserved places at elite universities. You're completely ignoring the fact that we come from a racist history and we still are in a racist history and you're not addressing that at all in your argument. Well, if it's always going to be addressed like that, then it will always be a problem. What they teach us is they teach us to argue the point, not the person. I have statistics right here about SAT scores, um, grade level, reading grade levels, math grade levels, and as a whole, black students do way worse than whites from the time that they're in the fourth grade to the eighth grade to the twelfth grade. The SAT scores are dramatically lower. What? How are you going to address that problem if that program is not allowed? So it was always, you know, I think that's a ridiculous idea because not, oh, you're so stupid. How could you say that? Like, 
that's such, you know what I mean? That, that's the kind of attitude that gets people, other people angry. And then you get two angry people yelling at each other and now no one's listening. Why is the university's job to fix, you know, past historical issues? Yeah, why it's not a university's problem. That's actually upper, high, like higher jobs problem to fix that. Problem? It is everybody's problem, but the, it, individually they can make a difference. They don't have to like reinstate a total segregated admissions program just to fix societal discriminations. That's not their job. Urban Academy prides itself on good teacher-student relationships, even down to exchanging mobile phone numbers so that they can talk outside school hours. What's critical is what happens outside the classroom as opposed to what happens inside the classroom. So there might be two or three kids that I call 6.30 every morning coming trying to get to school on time, right? Calling parents, dealing with stuff like that, trying to help kids and we have a free pizza lunch. So that's outside the classroom. Or even dealing with discipline in the classroom, you gotta deal with it outside the classroom. End whatever's happening now, get on with the lesson and then talk to the student outside of class where the, the not so defensive, and it's not the student's problem. It's like we have a problem. The most important part of creating a good school is to create a professional community, a place where teachers want to be, where they want to relate to each other, where they have, an, where it's interesting to try to solve problems, where they talk to each other about their work and about kids. The teachers I know that work in regular schools burn out and they burn out because they're teaching the same classes all day and then they'll teach the same class all year and year to year they may teach the same subject and I think it's inevitable that you would begin to burn out. One of the most miraculous things about the way the schedule is designed at Urban Academy and the way the administration here engages us as teachers is that we begin each semester with the question what would you like to teach this semester? Now that's a, that's a radical question, and most of the teachers I know in regular schools are never asked that question. I think that's what's interesting, is to offer teachers an opportunity to create a really rich curriculum, starting with perhaps their subject area, but also branching out into other things that they know about. You have to be certified in something, and that's usually what you teach, but we also want you to be able to teach other things that's your passion. So I teach a cooking class from time to time. Um, I teach lots of math classes, and uh, sometimes I teach this maps class. So it, I think it makes you better teacher in all your subjects. That's the kind of thing that keeps people in teaching longer, because we have a problem with that in America. Teachers are leaving in droves. The average seniority of all the teachers in New York City, 140,000 teachers, is less than five years. At the Urban Academy, only four teachers have left since 1993. They allow you the freedom that you need to turn into a young adult and an individual, and an individual to just take on the world, so I really enjoy that. I mean, I can go up to the principal of my school and talk to him for an hour about something that I don't like that's going on. These people did so much as far as they were instructors, they were therapists, they were friends you know, and they helped out.